you spoke and Skylum listened. I just got my hands on the latest update for Luminar Neo version 1.19.0 and wow am I ever blown away. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor and in this video you'll see why this update for Luminar Neo is the most exciting ever. Not only does Luminar Neo have two brand new landscape tools that will help you quickly take your images from this to this, but there's also two huge updates to the masking tools as well as some design and interface changes inside the app and a lot more. Skylum has gone above and beyond with this, its largest and most impressive update for Luminar Neo yet. So if you're ready to see all this exciting new stuff, let's get started. Before we dive right into the app, let me show you a list of all of the new features. As mentioned, there are two brand new tools, Water Enhancer AI and Twilight Enhancer AI. I'll briefly show you how they work in a moment. As well, there are also two new masking options available on most of your favorite tools. Luminosity masking is the first one, something that many photographers have been wanting for a while, and now it's here, as well as Object Select AI that works pretty well on the images I tested it on. Next, there's a few new functionality things. The biggest one is the ability to batch process your HDR bracketed images. You can now drop up to a thousand bracketed images from different sessions into the HDR merge tool and it will merge them all automatically. I'll show you that. It's pretty exciting if you do HDR. There's also an entire new category of tools called landscape. That's where you'll find the new ones. And finally, there's an option to turn off the dynamic background image that faded out one that's in the back of the app that so many people disliked. Along with all of those updates and changes, Luminar Nia also has a brand new look, including a new logo and color palette. If you have the Luminar for iPad app, you'll recognize the familiar colors and logo. Skylum wanted to have consistent branding across both platforms, as well as stand out from their competitors. Many photo editing apps have an icon or logo that incorporates a blue or pink color. So they wanted to separate themselves a little bit from the pack. Some of the other small interface changes are there's now an action panel at the bottom. I'll show you where to find it and what information is there and an actual export button. Likewise, with most updates, there are stability improvements and bug fixes. There are also a few more surprises. Stick around to the end and I'll show you all of the tiny little hidden things. Now let's hop over to Luminar Neo and take a look. As you saw by the list a moment ago, there's a lot of new stuff in this update. I have an early access or a beta version copy. So if you're looking for the update and not finding it, that's because it hasn't rolled out for everybody yet. It'll be released on April 25th. So unfortunately, you have to wait a little bit longer to get it, but it's well worth it, trust me. Let's take a look at some of the new things. There's a few changes visually. First, you'll notice that the logo in the upper left corner here is changed. So instead of the familiar blue and pink triangle that we're used to, now we have the new star logo. Over on the right hand corner, you'll see an export button. Previously, there was just a little icon with an up arrow that was a bit confusing for new users. Now it's very clear that this is where you go to export your images. The third thing is something that you can adjust in the settings. Go to Luminar Neo settings and you can turn off the dynamic background. So previously where there was the faded out image in the background, a lot of people dislike that because it's distracting. Now you can just simply turn it off and the background will become a dark gray. A pet peeve of mine previously was that it was very difficult to see the file name to know which image you're actually editing. Now, if you're in the catalog module and you double click an image, you'll notice at the bottom, there is a new status bar where you can easily see the file name. Yay. You'll also notice that the zoom tool as well as the preview buttons 
down here, the eyeball and the split screen view have now just moved over a little bit to the right. And there's an addition of a show film strip button. I really wish that this was also available in the edit module. Currently it's not, but I'm hoping they add that as well. But it's a nice addition here in the catalog module because now you can easily toggle the film strip on and off. You can still get to the actions pull down menu and you can also like or reject your image from the buttons on the left. So the new action bar is great. When you click edit and take your image in to be processed, you'll notice that the status bar is still there at the bottom, minus the film strip button, unfortunately. I have my fingers crossed, hoping they add that one soon as well. Okay, let's dig into some of the new functionality and tools. I've got a number of different HDR bracketed series here. You can see several different frames of different scenes. Previously, if you wanted to process these using HDR Merge, you'd have to do it one set of images at a time. Now you can do them all at once and Luminar figures out which ones belong together. Let's see how it works. I'm just going to do Command or Control A to select all of my HDR images, in this case, 25. You can drag up to a thousand images into the HDR Merge module now. I'm not going to do that many because keep in mind, the more you drop in there, the longer it's going to take to process. So here goes the 25 into the HDR Merge dialog box. Now you'll notice there is a new button down here that says Batch Processing. When you click it, now you see a new pop-up box with the sets of images. You'll notice that this one seems to be misplaced. That's easy to fix. Luminar wasn't sure where it went, so it put it by itself. You can easily just drag and drop if it gets any of the sets wrong. But other than that one, you can see that the other sets are categorized and separated correctly. From here, if you click the three dots, you have the usual HDR merge options that you can select for ghosting and chromatic aberration and so on. Once you're happy with the settings, you just have to click continue and it will merge all of the sets and give you the new HDR images in the dedicated folder. You'll also notice a progress status in the middle of the image to let you know how far along on the process it is. And here are the six merged HDR images. As I mentioned earlier, Skylum has listened to the requests of many of their users who previously had Aurora HDR where this functionality was also available. So you spoke, Skylum listened, and now we have batch HDR processing. Awesome. Next, let's take a look at the two new tools that have been added to Luminar Neo. The first one is the Water Enhancer. You'll find it in a new section called Landscape right below the Essentials panel. You'll also notice that the Landscape tool itself has been moved down here as well, which makes sense. So let's open the Water Enhancer and have a look. To activate it, you just drag the Amount slider up. Then you have a few options for adjusting the color, the intensity of the blue. You can shift or add a green tint, adjust the brightness and the contrast, and refine the area. If you hover your mouse over the image, you'll see the mask that was selected. This is very similar to using the Portrait Bokeh AI tool. It does the selection for you, and then you can either draw in any bits that got missed, like this spot right here, or erase any parts, like around the edge of the pool, where it went over the border. So you can refine the selection of the water using these tools. There's the before and after. Now, of course, this water already looked nice and blue. So how does it work on an image where the water is kind of dull looking? Let's try it. On this image of the waterfall, the pond at the bottom is kind of gray and yucky looking. So let's see how the water enhancer does on this image. Let's add a little bit of green, maybe a little bit less blue, 
If we lower the contrast, it brightens it as well. So we can work on that. Now notice it's also selecting the waterfall. So this is where we can apply the erase brush and let Luminar know that we just want it on the pond. That's it. There's a before and after. You'll notice there's no masking section at the top here because your mask is done in this refine area. Like all tools, if you want to apply it again, just close it and reopen it. And this time, if we want it to apply on the waterfall to make it bluer, we can erase it from the pond and simply draw it back in to the bits of the waterfall that got missed, like so. Then we can just adjust the color, brighten the waterfall, and there we go. This tool was announced quite a while ago, and I've been waiting anxiously for this one, and it does not disappoint. I'm quite happy with the results. One thing to make note of is that you can also go overboard with this tool. So be careful that you don't make it look unrealistic. In this foggy image that I took in Hong Kong, the water was really sort of gray and dull. By adding this amount of color, it's just not believable. So keep the edits a little bit more natural looking. You'll notice this original color slider helps to blend it a little bit nicer. So try that one when you have an image like this to keep the color a bit more on the natural looking side. Something like that. Now let's take a look at the next new tool, which is Twilight Enhancer. It's also in the same landscape section. When you open it, you'll notice at the top, there is a pull down menu for presets. Skylum has given us five presets for this tool. When you click each one, let's have a look. All it does is sets the sliders in the tool below to a predetermined amount. And of course you can still edit it and tweak the settings from there. It takes a moment for the color to get added to the sky, but you can see by clicking through the presets, what it's going to look like with each of them. That looks a little apocalyptic, <laughs> which might be applicable for this image. The one called blue is great for adding to the feeling of blue hour or twilight images. For this one though, I think I'm going to go with my first choice, emerald. Now you have some additional sections below to adjust the look. Sky will give you some options for adjusting the tint of the top part of the sky. This area up here. Under the dawn section, this is the middle area of the image. It allows you to add a color fade from the horizon up to the rest of the sky. They're calling this one dawn. You notice if I dial it down, you're going to see where it's affecting the image. So I can choose the amount and the size of the color in the middle. I'm going to hop down to mask refinement because this is also similar to sky AI. When you apply a sky replacement, you have to put it in the right orientation. So sky horizon here allows you to position where the dawn starts from. And similar to sky AI, you have a global slider where it applies more to the whole image and over top or take it to the left and it fades it out a little bit more. That looks a little bit more natural because the sun wouldn't be coming over top of the city, right? We also have a water reflection area where you can add the color of the sky into any water and scene relighting also similar to what you've seen in the sky AI tool. This is also where we can bring the saturation down of the overall effect. Let's try something like that. There's a before and after of the Twilight AI tool. It's a little dark for me, so I'm going to adjust the exposure a little bit. Next, let's take a look at the new masking options while we're here. When you go to the masking tab, you'll notice there is now luminosity and object select AI as two new options. Let's try luminosity first. It analyzes your image and looks at the various tones. And then you get this little grayscale sliding bar here. You can adjust which parts of your image are being selected using the luminosity masking, 
by adjusting this range here and the endpoints to blend it or feather it a little bit more like that. Or you can also click on the image in the tone that you want to be selected. In this case, the dark boat. You'll notice that it selected that area of the grayscale and feathered it nicely for me. If I want to narrow it down a little bit, you have the option of adjusting these from here. Let's see what happens if I click the sky. Now it has selected a different area. Let's go with this and see what the adjustments look like using that luminosity mask. Pretty effective, actually. This is another thing that people have been asking Skylum to build into Luminar Neo, and here it is. Luminosity masks are a powerful way to select certain tones of your image. This is a great addition to the program. Let's look at another example. I'm going to increase the structure on this image to bring out the details in the eagle's feathers. But I don't want it applying on the sky because that often causes green or artifacts. So let's use masking and try the luminosity mask on this one. I want it to apply to the dark parts of his feathers. So I'm going to click somewhere in here. You can see that it indeed has selected the darkest parts of his feathers. We can take a look and see how that works. Pretty impressive. Or we can go back and refine it by clicking luminosity again and choosing a different area. Likewise, we can expand the range if we want to pick up more of his feathers. Let's try that. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see what a really nice job it's doing of applying that just to the dark feathers. But what if I want to apply it to the whole bird? So let's go back to the masking tools and try another option. Before I apply object select, I'm just going to reset the mask or fill it so it's over the entire image. Now let's try object select. It analyzes your image and it immediately it doesn't look like it's doing anything. But you have two choices here. You can add or subtract to the selection. In this case, because the entire image is selected or masked, I'm going to use subtract and click on the sky. Now the selection isn't quite perfect, so I'm just going to go back to add and you'll notice as you hover over different parts, you can just click on them and it adds it to the mask. Now I've got his whole tail and all of his feathers. It's not quite perfect in this area here, so I could play with this a little more and see if I can do a subtract in here. But if it doesn't get it quite right, we can always use the regular masking tools. So I'm going to get it as close as I can using object select. And then I would just go back and use the brush to remove it from these little parts in here using a race. That's pretty close. Let's try object select on another example. I'm going to use structure again just because it's easy to see where it's applying. I want to add some structure and detail to these little rocks in the pile here, but not to the background or the foreground. So let's try the object select AI. Now you'll notice when you start with this tool by hovering over any of the objects, you'll see what it's going to select and add. So I can add one or more of these rocks. So I'm just going to click on each of them to add them. Let's try the foreground as well. Now when we go back to the adjustments, you can see how it looks. If you're not happy with your selection, just go back and let's subtract the foreground, for example, or maybe even this large one. Now you can see that it is applying the sharpening and the structure to just the small rocks. Previously, I would have had to use the brush and paint it into each of these little areas. Now using the object select AI, we can get really close and just do some minor refinements using the brush. This is a huge time saver. You can literally select any object this way. And of course, you can also copy and paste or sync your settings as well as put them into a preset using both the Twilight and Water Enhancer AI tools. I've already applied them on this image, so I'm going to copy the settings and paste them onto this one. 
And as usual, if it needs adjusting, just go into edits and do so here. I'm just going to lift the exposure on this one. There we go. Now you can see the color has shifted in both the water and the sky. If you enjoy this video and my teaching style, check out Luminar Neo The Complete Course. I will be adding some new lessons to incorporate these new tools. The course is always kept up to date, so as the program changes, so does the course. If you need to purchase Luminar Neo or upgrade your version, remember to use my discount code DPM10 to get 10% off when you check out. Okay, remember I said I'd show you a couple of other new little hidden things? Let's take a look. You may have already noticed one of them. Now, when you click on a slider, it activates. You see there's a little color around the button on the slider. As well, you can actually now select and type in an actual number into the slider amounts. This is great because now you can be precise and put it exactly where you want. I find that sometimes sliders can be a little bit clunky. So the ability to enter a number is a great option. Another new thing I mentioned when the HDR merge was happening, and that is a status update. So when you are applying something, for example, like Super Sharp AI, that takes a while, you'll notice at the bottom, it now tells you what is happening. In this case, it says applying Super Sharp AI. When it's completed, it goes back to the file name. This was another minor pet peeve of mine and a lot of other photographers is that you couldn't tell when Luminar Neo was doing something and when it was finished sometimes. Now with the status update at the bottom, it's easy to see. Whew, that was a lot in one update, right? I can't even believe how many things they packed into this version. So let me know in the comment area below, are you eager to get your hands on this update? Which tool are you going to go and try first? And which of the new changes is your favorite? I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you'd like some additional assets to go with Luminar Neo, check out our ultimate editing bundle that is full of skies, overlay textures, and bokeh overlays. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, click one on the screen now. Take care, until next time, we'll see you soon.